Hey, welcome back everyone. Welcome back again to another episode of The Daily Show. Happy Tuesday. This episode is for May 25th of 2021. What day is it? I just said it a while ago. Tuesday for May 25th. Well, not at the point of recording. So we, we got to do what Sandy's doing, but we can't do it right now. Uh, you don't see it, but Sandy's walking over here. Sandy, you can like walk around. There you go. See, look. Sandy's doing her daily exercise. We gotta do it too, Joe. She she's she came back, but I'm already sick of her already. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love Sandy. For today, though, uh, let's see. We'll talk about being a geek. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a geek. Are you a geek? I consider myself a geek. Yeah. Yeah, because uh -huh. you always play video games and anime yeah. <laughs> and cartoons. And right? Cartoons. Uh, we're also gonna talk about tap dancing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys did it at least once in your life. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about wine. Wine. You know? uh, and for our stuff of the day, uh, we'll talk about things that start with letter S. This time, it's like correct. Sleep. I like letter sleep. S. I like sleep. Sleep starts with letter S, and I like that. That's true. All right. I'll, so let's go ahead and start right here. First, start, observance. Start with letter S, too. <laughs> All right, first observance is <clears throat> Geek Pride Day. Geek Pride Day. Geek is often seen as uh, being eccentric, non-mainstream, uh, a little bit socially awkward. Well, that was back then. Nowadays, it's more acceptable. Though. That's right. Uh, before, don't forget intellectual. Uh, yeah, yeah. Before, right? in the, like, the early 90s <clears throat> and 80s and 70s, there were a bunch of movies where, you know... They got like a the tucked sports in guy, shirt. The sports guys always bully <clears throat> the geek kids. The, the, what do you call that? The jockey. The jocks, the sports <clears throat> jocks. Then the geek will always try and find their revenge through science, they build mm -hmm. machines, robots, and stuff like that to get back at them. <laughs> back and then, but back then in school, right? Uh, right. Geeks were usually bully because they have like weird, um, we call it weird hobbies. They think it was weird. That, yeah, well, like, like what the definition said, non-mainstream. Right, so right. it's not like the norm. Yeah. You know, they get, in, they get interested in doing or making things that uh, people don't usually... Uh, Find common. Find common, exactly. There you go. That, that's, yeah. Uh -huh. So I grew up in the 90s, right? And mm -hmm. that's when, you know, Pokemon came out, Pokemon card came out, uh, video game came out, right? It's more of a more of a thing. So back then, people were still like going outside playing baseball and skateboards, and I was still inside my house playing <laughs> Play like, video game. games or collecting cards, right? So that would be considered geek. You know what? Some pe speaking of which, some people uh, even say that geeks are similar to nerds. Right, right, right. No, yeah, well, yeah. What, what do you think about that? <clears throat> geeks are, I think geeks are more electronic. To, to, no, no, geeks are more to the next level where they're more. Um, so you're saying uh, there are nerds, and then the, the higher level are geeks. Yeah. So geek, what is it? Geek is more of <clears throat> a, a fandom for something, while nerds are more school-wise, scholarly-wise, intellectual. Oh, Nerd, nerds okay. are more like they're smart because they spend all the time studying, right? Geeks spend all their money and time buying, you know, knickknacks like Funko Pops, posters, collectibles, collectible video okay. games, uh, costumes that this guy <laughs> wears of his favorite character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like trying to remember, like back then when I was growing up, right? Mm -hmm. All my friends were like watching, you know, Dawson Creek and all that. Uh, teen drama about you know they're growing up with puberty and try to get uh relationships and stuff like that right me i was just watching pokemon digimon all these cartoons dragon ball z i grew up on dragon ball z that, that is that is your uh, childhood right mm, there that's geek i mean i could i could say i shared the same childhood you know yeah yeah we, we do we, we are pretty to, much geeks in a man body yeah, <laughs> we're, we're still a man child <laughs> to the point where it, it affected uh my character as a person you know like uh the 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 trait of me to always do my best that's one I, I i you know if i'm being honest i got it from a tv show right uh uh what do you call this not giving up you know right, another right, one right. yeah like, like those kinds of traits uh you know like the, the the tv shows that i've been watching when i was a kid kind of influenced me like oh like if he if he can do it i can do it too in front of a a struggle or a challenge in life you but know you know the funny thing is like because <clears throat> You know, I was like, you know, bully when I was a kid, right? Being mm -hmm. a geek. But nowadays, <clears throat> being a geek is more something prized among people. Because they're like, wow, they actually have something they're so into. They're right, like, interesting. Right. They can uh -huh. talk about it, right? They, well, they, and not only that, but the, uh, the community. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The, the community, community of a lot they, of, uh, yeah, let's say anime or games and, oh, or, yeah, or yeah. Uh, 
what what are the things that you would oh electronics right uh technology right it's it's getting really big now these days yeah so like the community that uh that have the same interest mm -hmm. kind of is growing bigger and bigger so uh even though a lot of those factors can define a geek uh, a lot of people do do accept that uh right. Uh, that that uh, the, fandom, the geek them. Yeah, the, the interest. Yeah, on that one now, right? So for me, <clears throat> right back, back then, I used to collect uh, Pokemon cards, right? Mm -hmm. Comic books, uh, action figures, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I, you know, I still play some uh, card games, but it's all digital, so I don't have any physical things with me. Right. But the geek never dies. There you go. Yeah, the geek inner never, geek. Yeah. Your yeah. inner geek. I do have a friend who collects a lot of uh, Funko Pops. You know, Funko Pops are those like those kind of like those bobbleheads. Yeah, yeah, he has uh -huh. a lot. He has a room he dedicated does? for it. So, do you any, do you have any hobbies? No, I well, I do have any. Uh, I do have hobbies, but I'm not really into collecting. First of all, because like uh, space, right? Limited, space, limited yeah. Space. Uh, uh, you know, my wife and I are just living in an apartment. Well, right. I don't want to say just, but we're living in an apartment. Right. It's not a house. For so, now, for now, yeah, yeah. So we have a tendency to move, and I don't want you know like you'll like, be unburdened. You'll be able to get up and go right away. I, I, I gotta make sure that these collectibles don't get damaged when moving. No, I, absolutely. If I'm gonna start collecting, I need to have like a permanent, uh, you know. Permanent, permanent place right. more like a house so my question for mm -hmm. our viewers is you probably have a little bit of geek in you right yeah uh -huh. and i want to know what you guys collect or really fan of in terms of uh, media that's not really you know what we call it uh, i mean you're, mainstream right but nowadays mainstream because no, let, I mean, let me say something though. okay so back then right when we were talking about <clears> comics <throat> and stuff like that right nowadays it's so mainstream you can watch avengers marvel that's that true stuff, that's right? true before true. people were like oh only nerds and geek read comic well because yeah because it was in the comic books before right, comic right, books right. are kind of associated with uh you know with being a geek and nerd right, or right, nerd right. now it's so we call it it's like a huge business opportunity exactly right i mean make a movie the the <clears throat> sorry the Marvel Cinematic Universe. How many movies did they make already? Like twenty-one movies, and they all came. I mean, High at least grossing. the stories. The stories came all came from one books. person in comic books. Yeah, Stan you know? Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not one person, but I know there's a lot of uh, other people who contributed in that one. And um, the geek culture it, it transcends, you know, race too. <laughs> Yes, yes. No matter, no matter where, where you're you are, from, no where you're born, what skin your color is, it's kind of like a language. You speak the same language. It, if it, you, you it know. is. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, you were saying. Well, here's another thing, mm -hmm. though. I mean, I, w I, w I won't agree with you when it comes to the non-mainstream part because we're not done in this month yet, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Star Wars. Right, right, right. And right. Star Wars, a lot of uh, following, a lot of. Uh, Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ever since it was released, uh, when was it? 1977 originally. Yeah, yeah, um, 1977. I think on episode this day. four. I think on up this until day now, too, right? <laughs> so may the force be with you. I mean, that's really geek. That's a geek, geek uh, call sign right there. Right, right. <laughs> it's like the bat sign. Right but it was a it was a big thing. Uh, big thing. Yeah. Big thing. Especially, you know, from the from the very first uh, release of the movie, 1977, up until now. Because you know why? These <clears throat> these geek culture right it really starts jump start the imagination right, right right that's what oh there's another star uh tv show or movie star trek, trek. yeah star trek go. too yeah 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 star trek is more nerdier because it's more science yeah it, it has more explanation yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, less action uh so more that's, that's where you get your nerd and your geeks yeah. geeks are just more like socially <clears throat> awkward nerds are just more even more socially awkward because they just focus <laughs> on you know yeah science. like especially with a lot of people or when, when someone will try to explain a lot of things right. and want even though you're you, you just want but for me i appreciate it because i really wanted to understand how things work so. oh yeah, yeah absolutely yeah <clears throat> but not too much <laughs> right okay so uh well so much for the first observance second observance uh may not have anything to do with mm. being a geek it's still fun to do though very fun to do tap dancing mm. have you tap danced before yes uh when i was uh going to the middle school prom <laughs> right someone tapped my shoulder to ask oh me no dance. that's that's different oh now, okay when we, when we say tap dance we actually use the sole of our oh not sole the what do you call this part right here the the back part of your shoes your heel the your, sole. oh yeah your heel there the, you go your heel part I of your sole. your your heels 
to make a sound to the beat of the you know of, of the song or yeah. of the music you can do with your mm. shoes but there are specialized shoes that actually enhances the sound of the and a specialized floor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. To, to produce the sound right uh here's to my surprise when i was doing the research mm. tap dancing actually originated in the united states and it's thought to have begun in the uh mid 19th century mm -hmm. with the rise of minstrel and vaudeville shows oh okay it's like those old-timey pianos yes like, yes like that, those the, happy happy uh, you no know, piano the right pinstripe red and white pinstripe with the hat straw hats mm -hmm. kind of yeah okay uh so this unique form of dance is a combination of irish and british step um and or dancing and african juba dance um early tap shoes had wood soles just like uh what we we're talking about a while ago that tapped out the dance out to the dance beat so so you're really uh <coughs> mimicking the music yes the uh -huh. beat of the music mm -hmm. using your feet and you go tap tap i gotta be honest because i'm not really a good dancer uh, a lot of people are are saying if you're not a good dancer you either have like two left feet foot uh -huh. two left feet i guess so or two right feet well yeah just because whisper. you can only move <laughs> one one direction right you know uh, uh yes go ahead <clears throat> well the, the dancing for me is hard already but imagining tapping to the dance or tapping to the beat while dancing it's uh you know it's gonna be more challenging you gotta have a lot of stamina because you're moving your whole body right look right. at that these guys have their legs way up <laughs> yeah swaying and their arms are stretched out too hey but speaking of like tap dancer right one of my uh i think one of the top dancers i know is like shirley temple the, mm -hmm. little, the little girl with the curls she can tap dance oh yeah i think so right or i'm miss mistaken yeah, i'm pretty sure yeah so what else uh, well unfortunately i i don't really know specifically anyone who mm. is famous for tap dancing but as far as the history is concerned in the mid to late 1800s mm. dance com competitions were a common form of entertainment so later called cutting contests these intense challenges between dancers uh, were an excellent breeding ground for new talent uh one of the earliest records such as uh took place in 1844 between black dancer william henry lane known as master juba that's why it's called like the juba dance right right uh-huh and the irish dancer john diamond uh dancers matured by learning each other's techniques and rhythmic innovations so it, it's great i mean you know like how we incorporate our own version in food you know when we learn some other dish from other countries same goes for same goes for dancing. Speaking of Irish, right? Isn't <coughs> rain dance a tap dance too? I, I would think so. They're Irish. Oh, well, too, right? yeah, not not specifically tap dance because again, the tap dance would be a mix. Uh, one would be the rain dance, right? And then uh, another would be from the African culture. No, is so it, the it was Lord like the dance, Laura dance. Um, I forgot. But they they usually uh, tour around the world in a dance troupe. Oh, yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, could yeah, be. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, some people are like <clears throat> classically trained in for part of a dance. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're learning modern dance now, right? You, some people are like classically trained in tap dance. Yeah. Yes. Also, if you look at the history, or I'm sure there's a YouTube video, mm -hmm. show, you know, showcasing, showcasing yeah. the, should I call it evolution of dance? History, even though just a history. The history of yeah. dance is more like it because, I don't know, it, I, I'm not sure if dance actually evolves. It changes, that's for sure. But well, there's is, always new innovations, so it right. did change, it did change, yeah. Okay, but it, it all comes down to the person's, uh, I guess, preferred type of dance. Because up until now, we still have uh, tango, we still right. have cha-cha, you know, those right. classic dance. We got line dance, everyone's favorite. Line dancing or square, square dance. dancing, there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, for today, if you want to celebrate National Tap Dance Day, you don't really have to do tap dance if you can't. You can learn more about it, though. Mm, yes. You can learn more about it. How how did it come into play? You know, how did it become famous? So. I just watched videos about tap dancing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, speaking of tap dancing, our notable figure born today is related to tap dancing. So. Oh, he's a tap dancer. Oh. He's a tap dancer, yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. Lastly, we have wine. National Wine Day. Today, we celebrate wine. History again. Wine has been produced since at least 6000 BCE, where evidence has found uh, of it in a country of Georgia. Not, uh, not the state. Not the state, <laughs> not the country the state. of Georgia, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Wine like this spread from Mesopotamia to Egypt, Greece, Rome. 
and Rome, and then to France and Spain. So uh, before coming to the Americas, and also it has long been part of a religious tradition. Um, ancient Egyptians used it in ceremonies, whereas uh, oh, where it was associated with blood. I mean, because you know, especially red wine. It looks like yeah, yeah. The Greek god of wine was Dionysus. 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 Uh, his Roman counterpart was Bacchus, because uh, yes. you, you know, like Romans and Greeks, they have their share history. Shared yeah, history, culture. they just have different names. Yes. Like, I think Romans, if I'm not mistaken. Aries and Mars. Yes, yes. I mean, for Romans, they're, they're, uh, most of their gods' names are kind of like the names of the planets now. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, wine was also important to Jews uh, during biblical times. Mm. Uh, became important to Christians, uh, being used by the Eucharist. Mm. It's a ceremonial part. Mm. Now, here's an, another interesting uh, fact about wines. Did you guys know in ancient time, people drink more wine than water? Well, because wine is more acidic and, you know. Not only that. No, there's no bacteria in there. Yes, because back in the day, we don't have proper uh, filtration. filtration for the water. But of course, when you make a wine, it, when you make wine, you ferment it. And the natural fermentation, what, what does it do? It, it could kill germs that can cause like uh, salmonella, salmonella and cholera. Yeah, so because alcohol, mm. well, wine gets you, you know, <clears throat> intoxicated. Gets yeah. You drunk. So it does have. It does have alcohol in it. So the salmonella alcohol. and cholera get, gets drunk too? No, they, they, they die. And they die. Yeah, the, the, uh, <laughs> they can't handle their wine. Are they bacteria? They're bacteria, right? Yeah, salmonella is a bacteria. Cholera is a bacteria. Too. Okay, so those bacteria actually die from fermentation in the wine. Right. So, you know, if, if, if you see like old movies about festival, they always drink wine. Not because, I guess not only because they want to get drunk, but of course it's safer to drink than uh, regular water. So... Yeah, that's pretty cool. You're a wine drinker? No, not really. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink. And then I guess in the other parts of uh, of the world, instead of wine, they have tea instead I of have tea. regular water, right? Like last uh, Friday, International <clears throat> Tea Day. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay, given that wine is taken in moderation, because that's the key word right there, anything that's too much is not good, uh, wine has many health benefits. Uh, wine not only fights heart disease, it can also help fight type 2 diabetes, uh, stroke, some cancers and high cholesterol, and even liver disease. So I guess now, like it, antioxidants, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, because the, the common, what, what's the common uh, fruit to be used in wine? Grapes, grapes, right? And it's berry. And we know that berries are a high good antioxidant source of antioxidants. Antioxidant. Yeah. Uh, but then again, even though it sounds good, it doesn't mean that you, you know, you kind of like, chug a bottle of wine because anything is mod is in moderation don't forget about the alcohol part though of course the alcohol part is the not so good part of the wine Ugh, tell yeah. me about it uh all right so i have other surprising facts about wines i call them surprising because i didn't know it i have a cool fact too what is it i think wine is like a truth serum <laughs> <laughs> when a person when a person drinks it they really speak their mind because they lower their inhibition it depends on the person it could be truth serum for some but for me tried and tested it's a sleeping agent so before i even reveal the truth i'll be like <laughs> wow <laughs> i'm a lightweight so yeah wow well and for me right yeah uh <clears throat> if i drink wine i get red really fast right so you're a lightweight too. I uh, yeah, I have that Asian flush, you know. Yes, yeah. No, but I uh, I don't get hangover though. Okay, that's yeah, good. I get all the alcohol out of my body real quick. But yes, uh, I mean I'm not I'm not really as yeah, light skin. I, I, I don't drink. No, I'm just saying I'm I'm not really light skin, but it it will show my blush yeah, once I see, start drinking, you know. And then people can really say, "Oh, you're drunk." <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> no. I'm still conscious. I know what's going on, but like everything is kind of spinning around. And then it's like, JR, you're talking to a wall. <laughs> but, uh, but you're not scared of wine, are you? No, I'll drink it socially. Yeah. There you go. Because I, I ask you that because believe it or not, there are some people who have fear of wine. Winophobia? No, it's called Owenophobia. Okay. I wish I pronounced that right. O Onophobia. So I would say it's Onophobia. O E N O P H. O-B-I-A. Yeah. Onophobia. Onophobia. Uh, 
on display here's another thing on display in a german museum the oldest bottle of wine was nearly 1700 years old you know so funny if it's bottle right it can last for thousands thousands of years you leave a wine out for one day it goes bad <laughs> i find that really interesting well really? i know i know why because the oxygen oh the yeah the oxidate the oxidation oxygenation yeah. or oxidation oxidation okay, so oxidation, oxidation, oxidation. uh and then uh lastly the top three most significant producers of wine in the world can you guys guess what, what do you guess france france is one yeah uh spain is the second one and italy Italy. hey you know what <clears throat> are we in wine country that's what they say wine valley well u.s is still up there uh, actually u.s is the fourth producers of wine no, 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 no. i'm talking about our beautiful state you have napa valley mm -hmm. we have napa valley <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think of, really. No, our state, California, is yeah. actually famous for wine producing. But if, when, when we're talking about globally, you know, uh, as a country, U.S. is only the fourth producers of wine. It's not bad, though. No. Yeah, because, I mean, like I said, how many countries do we have? Uh, about a lot, a lot, basically. More than 100. More than 100, right? And, and you're the fourth one. So wine. It's not bad. Was originated in over there, in Europe and all the other places. Exactly, right? before and, it and reached it here. Us. Yeah. And we managed to be fourth. We're like, hey, we're pretty good. I Guess think. what the fifth uh, country or the top five. Oh, wait. The, the fifth country in the list. Uh, let me think of a place. Uh, I'll give you a clue. A lot of things are made there. And some of those qualities are not good. <laughs> China. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> really, so th talk? those are the top five uh, uh, wine producers in the world. Yeah, wine doesn't have to be, when you speak of China, right? I was thinking about like, wine doesn't need to be really from grapes. You can have rice wine. Of course, yeah, yeah. definitely. There are uh, different kinds of, of uh, what? Not sources. Sources, sources. Sources where you can wine. produce wine. Yeah. yeah. So there you have it. Um, it's all about the process of fermentation. Yes. Yes. All right, cool, 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 cool. Do we have a, I was, now I was thinking if we have a, uh, an exclusive wine made in the Philippines, but I can't think of any, yeah. All righty, guys. Uh, we're still not done with observances, just in case you wanted to uh, celebrate something else or learn about something else. We got Towel Day, pretty simple. Um, National Missing Children's Day, a little sad, but the truth is a lot of children are are you know are missing you know it's year. not sad if we find them yes uh-huh and then lastly national brown baget day you know for to go lovers nah. all righty those are our observances for today guys moving on today in history on may 25th we're not done with this in this month we are not done we're still talking about star wars we got star wars on may 4 we got star wars on one of my musical art uh, and then we have today in history, 1977, Star Wars opens in theaters. You know what's weird? I'm looking at uh, Darth Vader, right? Yeah. One, his lightsaber. Is yellow? He has orange. It's not even red, usually. And it has a, a hilt. Oh, yeah. Is, is it a hilt? Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. the, the one that separates the blade and the handle. It's like a protector, so you know your hand doesn't slide onto the blade, but that's so That is weird. so weird. Yeah, I well, just noticed that. Yeah, like when you look at Luke, right? And his belt is hanging his lightsaber. It doesn't have that kind of... Mm-hmm. This is weird. I know, right? I just noticed that, actually. That's good. And I was thinking that uh, Han Solo and Princess Leia are holding a lightsaber, but they're actual laser guns. I don't know. <laughs> But that's one of the, uh, what do you call it, um, art, artwork, you know. I kind of like movie. it has a classic feel to it, science fiction book kind of. The incredible success of Star Wars, because it received seven Oscars, seven Oscars, and earned 461 million in the U.S. ticket sales and gross of close to 800 million worldwide, began an extensive coordinated marketing push by Lucas, George Lucas, and his studio, 20th Century Fox, Months before the movie's release date. I don't know what else to say. It's just a great movie. It you is. Know? It is. Again, I'm not even a big fan. I know a lot of our students, uh, at least two of our students specifically, is the biggest fan of Star Wars that I know. I, I just don't know any other space science fiction movie that's on this level. Yeah. Uh -huh. Star Trek hasn't reached that level of Star Wars fandom. They literally, or, or at least George Lucas literally... Uh, Monopolize it. 
built the universe. He built the empire. in a literal manner. He built yeah. the empire, and he's striking back. <laughs> So yeah, but again, we talked about it in our you know last episode. Well, not last last episode, but one of our last episodes. That the so far the new um, sequels for this movie uh, was not uh, didn't get that much positive um, review. I mean, when you talk about the classic, it's way. But uh, we yeah, talked about a time period that it was in. Yeah, and it kind of revolutionized, revolutionized uh, exactly. filmmaking. Y- yeah, exactly. Practical effects, some little bit, some CGI. I was gonna say that, and this month we're doing all Star Wars, right? Mm, so yes. realizing when when I saw Episode Four again, because mm. we were in Episode Four two weeks ago. This is the seventies, nineteen seventies, but the it looks amazing. Yes, the the, practical the, effects. the 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 effects are just it's like. This is 1977. Well, of course, if you if you compare it today, you'll be like, ah, it's kind of weird, you know? It's already 2021, and they're still using that kind of e- effect. But 1977, that was like the only one, not even the first, uh, not e- just only the first, but also the only one who had that kind of effect yeah, at that time. Yeah, absolutely. Graphic, graphical effect, so pretty awesome. Mm. And then... Notable figure born today, I just like what I told you, has something to do with tap dancing. We have Bill Robinson, 1878. And remember, uh, or I hope you don't, uh, you haven't forgotten, uh, when we talked about tap dancing, it became famous somewhere in the mid 1800s, 1900s. So, Bill Robinson is regarded today as one of the world's best tap dancers. Uh, Robinson made his start in vaudeville before becoming a movie star later in life. Oh! So he became an actor after. Right. Yeah. Robinson created a new influential shuffle, shuffle tap style of dancing that made him famous, and he also invented the stair dance routine, dancing oh. up, the <laughs> dancing up and down the staircase backwards and forwards. Okay. Okay. I see. I I, I know what you're talking it's about. It's Mr. Robinson right there. Yeah. 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 It's there back you go. in my head now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I remember that scene. Um, as being an actor from the 1930s, Robinson was a Hollywood star, famously appearing alongside child star Shirley Temple. I mentioned her earlier. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For whom he adapted his stair dance routine in The Little Colonel. 1935, by the way. So, yeah. Uh, pretty awesome. Happy birthday to Mr. Bill Robinson. I, I wish I could, like, not invent, but I, I could come up with something that people would you know would would follow <laughs> that one that, that's awesome like for bill robinson his style uh the staircase dance you know not uh, he's known for that you can dance in an elevator i, I <laughs> or escalator i mean an escalator you stand up <laughs> like michael jackson for example moonwalk right signature dances or signature wow. moves you don't have a signature move do you i do it's you do the macarena no, it wasn't even yours, so. Place of the week. Where are we going this week, Jar? Yeah? Uh, I saw you guys yesterday uh, as an intro for El Salvador. Ooh, South America. So huh? we're doing El Salvador still, but national symbols. Start with the t- national bird. It's a pretty bird. Turquoise browed motmot. Motmot. The turquoise browed motmot is a beautifully colored medium sized bird that lives in the y- Yucatan, Yucatan or Yucatan. Peninsula to Mexico down to Costa Rica. Uh, the bird is approximately 13 inches long, um, so about more than a little bit more than a foot. Yeah, together from head to tail. Okay, not just the body, um, and weighs about 2.3 ounces. Oh, it's really light. Well, yeah. Small. Uh, well, they're not really as uh, they're not really that small if you think about it compared to other you know like the other finch. Yeah. The yeah. other finch are smaller. Smaller, yeah. But they're light, and it has mostly green blue body with a rufous back and belly hmm. yeah it does i see it yeah it's a little yellow belly too but but the Chest. uh what do you call this the most prominent part is the brow part right there is turquoise right there you can you guys can see it on top of its eyes yes you got the turquoise color um lifespan average of 20 years both in the wild and in captivity so nice. even if they're kept in captivity uh their lifespan doesn't really get improved i mean it doesn't have that much uh predators yes uh-huh yeah um, next would be the national flower of El Salvador, Izote. Oh, isn't this the corn thing that we eat? No, no, it's different. And uh, they. Oh, elote, sorry. Oh, I didn't get that. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh, I didn't get that. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. 
It does kind of like like the letter Z kind of looks like a letter L though. Oh so yeah. Is that a flower? Is the natural flower of El Salvador? That's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Which is also considered as one of the national symbols of El Salvador. If because I'll you know show you guys later an emblem of El Salvador. Kind of look like tulips and orchid. Yeah. Yeah. The flower of Izote grows a shrub that blooms mostly between months uh, of March and April. It is common to observe that it is uh, sold in the markets, supermarkets in the country. In other parts of America, this flower is known as Flor de Itabo, uh, which is also a rich source of vitamin C. If so they're edible. Oh, okay, that's what I was going to say. If it's edible, like, can you eat it like what? What, what, what can you eat in it? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know any dish that, oh. that has that, but knowing that it's edible so it's, it's a good thing eggs soup you know could be usually flowers are put salad. into in, into chowders or soups yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. or you know salad yeah or, or salad yeah. yeah because of its beauty and be considered as a repress representative of the country's you know flower the flora, flower flora as in um what do you call it is natural native yeah yeah, yeah. uh-huh uh, the flower of Izote was named as the national flower in 1995. Hmm. So, I mean, because they, 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 they're just abundant. I mean, they're, the it's the best way to represent your country. Yeah, the, the, something that actually is found in your country. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I don't know. Scotland? Unicorn? <laughs> Wait, there's a unicorn in Scotland? No, but that's their national animal. All right, we're going to find some. Bye. What? <laughs> and speaking of the emblem, it's right there. And actually, we're talking about the, the motto, you know? Uh, their motto is God, Union, and Liberty. Uh, uh, but when you look at the emblem, the 14 clusters of the leaves represent 14 departments of the state of uh, El Salvador. All, all of this is surrounded by a laurel garland, which is tied together under a national flag. Yeah, there's seven on one side, seven on the other side. Cool. Yeah, 14. 14. So there you have it. Those are our national symbols for El Salvador. Let's rush through the stuff of the day. Letter S now. Let's start with something simple. Animal of the day, squid. <laughs> squid is a remarkable ocean predator, no matter what the size is, you know? Uh, this invertebrate is a type of mollusk. You, should, you guys should know what a mollusk is now because we're doing amazing animals before. Uh, and just, but just like snails, or, but compared to snails, oh, by the way, Squid, mollusks, uh, snails, mollusks too. Differences, yeah. uh, snails have shells. Yeah. You know what the cool thing is? You know what a, a bird and a squid have in common? A bird and squid have in common? Eyes? They got eyes. They have beaks. They got beaks? Yeah, the mouth have little beaks, they break shells. Oh, that's cool. I think so. I don't think you call it beaks though. I think it's beaks. It's beak-like, but their mouth, yeah. Go ahead, keep talking. I'll look it up. <laughs> the squid have two tentacles that are longer than its arms. Oh, they do have beaks. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Does it say beak? Oh, yeah, it does say beak. Yeah. Yes, it's like a little Cephal beak. Cephal cephalopod. 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 It means head. Mm -hmm. Cephalopod. Uh, well, pod means foot. That means the foot is connected to the head. Yeah, which the tentacles the squid, are. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. octopus. Um, anyways, they are usually hidden from view, but shoots out to capture prey. Uh, we're talking about the uh, the longer tentacles of the squid. Uh, the squid can change its color uh, and swim backwards by pushing water <laughs> out from their bag-like bodies. So it's like, uh, like squeezing a water balloon. <laughs> yeah, and actually you can do that too if you're swimming. If you kind yeah. of swim like a squid, uh, it pushes you backwards. Yeah. <clears throat> Many squid are small, slim animals, but... The giant squid and the colossal squid can bro grow up to more than 40 feet. You always see them wrestling uh, whales. <laughs> I'm not sure if... Uh, no, they do. They fight whales. Really? You see whales with scars, right? It's because the tentacles of the squid... And you would like think that they don't have any sharp... It. Yeah, you would think they don't have any sharp edges because they're all like slimy and... and well, the thing is their, their tentacles, they have grippers, you know? Oh, they that's that's what scratches the whale, huh? And they have... We just found out they have beaks. You know what's amazing? Yes, they're highly They, they vary too. in size. Like, I mean, if you've eaten a squid before, you, you can say it's about small. they're just this small, like calamari, right? Yeah. But they could grow, especially the colossal squid and the giant squid. Usually 40 feet? It, you usually find it in the depths of the ocean. Yes, uh, with more pressure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
They had to. Ah, uh, because their body's built to more pressure. I mean, yeah, if it's that big, you know what? Stay down there. I don't okay. want you guys coming up in the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> well, 40 feet, right? 40 yeah, no feet. Way. So from this floor right here to that uh, ceiling would be estimated roughly about 20 feet. So double the size. So imagine this building of Discovery two, as a two-story building, then yes. So how about this? Let's say five jar on top of each other. Around there, around like 30, 38 feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh -huh. you think of Jared how tall he is, right? Put five of them on top of each other, boom, that's how big a giant squid is. Wow. You're a giant squid. You're a, a fifth of a giant squid. If, I, if, if, I'm, fifth if there's squid. five of me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Or six. Yeah. All right, moving on. Plan of the day. We got sapphire berry. Sapphire it does look blue. Whoa, this it does look like blue. a sapphire. It right? Looks super blue. It looks kind of like a grape, to be honest. The intensely blue fruit of the tree are relatively short lived as the fleshy berries are quickly eaten by birds. Oh, berry wine, duh. <laughs> yeah. The foliage of the tree is neat and the flowers are often fragrant. Mm. So they smell good. They smell good, yeah. yeah. Uh, the leaves have short uh, petioles and vary in their ovoid shape, measuring about 3.5 inches in length and half as wide. Wow. Uh, the leaves bear some trichomes, or I guess that's uh, the small, small hair. hair. It's the fuzzy part. Yeah, the fuzzy part of uh, the plant above and are far more pubescent. Did I pronounce that right? Pubescent. Pubescent. On their veins beneath. Um, the species bloom in early summer after leaves uh, have developed. Right, right, right. So that's our plan today, guys. Nice. Moving on to our Music musical art. art of the day. I don't know if you heard this song. You should have. It's a very famous song, especially back in 2011, 2012. You always hear it in the radio. I never heard Safe this. and Sound by Capital Cities. I don't know this song. I can lift you up. I can show you what stop, you want. You oh. gotta be. Anyways, you know, one of our students uh, in in Zoom actually loved this song. Okay, now I remember the song now. So we look at where we talk about the music art, right? There's a mountain. There's seagulls. There's a mammoth wearing sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, being carried, being carried by, by a blimp, a zeppelin. A zeppelin. There you go. Safe and Sound is a song by American indie pop duo Capital Cities, ah. written and produced by band members Ryan Merchant and Sebu Simonian. The song was released as a single in January 6, 2011, and first appeared in their debut EP Capital Cities, um, 2011. Later serving as the lead single from their debut um, studio album. So EP, right? <coughs> EP means extended play. Yes. So it means like a song. They probably have some instrumental, a remix, and kind of make it a little bit more stretch out mm -hmm. in terms of music you buy. It. So that's mm -hmm. called extended play. Right. Right. Uh, as far as the the song, this uh -huh. song, uh, specifically this song, this is their main entry of uh, being known as as a duo that, you know are they like a one hit wonder or something because i never heard of them more uh they did made an they did made an album they did make an album yeah yeah but uh I, yeah i guess you're right i haven't heard of any of their hit, songs in the radio one hit wonder though. that's yeah. a shame but uh yeah the song was uh, actually good you know i mean it peaked at number eight in the united states billboard top mm. our hot 100 and achieving commercial success in several other territories so yeah i mean that might not be number one but still um number eight is still pretty close yeah i mean i can get on top <laughs> 10 so what am i saying <laughs> yeah all right word of the day we have susceptible susceptible now let me spell it for you guys it's s-u-s-c-e-p-t-i-b-l-e -S -E -E. susceptible what does it mean jer it's an adjective and it means likely or liable to be influenced or harmed by a particular thing so when you say susceptible it kind of it's like a weak point leans to something not good i mean it's it, uh, the connotation is negative is it you know? being a, like a, a vulnerable point yes yes there you go a weak point Just a weak point. Point. yes and They're i got easily persuaded easily persuaded yeah, yeah that's yes. also another uh um meaning of susceptible yeah um i the, the example i have right over there Am I pointing in the right direction? Right there. Children may be more susceptible to infection than uh, adults. Yeah, so. because their immune system is not that strong. 
Mm -hmm. And it's still developing. It's still developing, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of uh, weak points, weak area that the body of a child is not ready to defend yet compared to the more developed uh, adult immune system. Right. Right. So that's how you use the word susceptible. I am. I am susceptible to getting tired. There you go. Yes. I have my coffee. (laughs) <laughs> Alright, don't worry Joe, you're gonna get your coffee now because we're at the last part of the episode What? what Tech is a, trivia! What is a rice cookie do with coffee, Jr? Well, no, but I mean, I'm just saying we're almost done So. Oh, okay, okay <laughs> Letter S, Sony Did you know that Sony's first electronic product was a rice cooker? Wow, what kind of video games can you play on this? <laughs> I'm a geek You can't play <laughs> video games on a rice cooker, Joe Even though, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a game console that you can put KFC chicken uh, just recently uh, I mean when I said recently I think it was just last year Whoa. but but that's for another time anyways Sony famous for TV famous for phones famous for speakers the Walkman yeah uh, music players yeah. It's now the the game console PlayStation right but before all that before all that just look, go back in time that's their first electronic product rice cooker their true first, <laughs> I mean, my, my script even said true. First electronic product was actually a rice cooker. Unfortunately, it became a flop. It wasn't that good. And that's the reason why you don't see it anymore. Uh, the reason why it flopped is because it does it couldn't really cook the, <laughs> it couldn't really cook the rice. It could be undercooked or overcooked. <laughs> yes, so. Uh, you find a golden lot of rice cooker. Yes, but uh, I think if you find one, uh-huh. you're gonna. Uh, it's kind of like a collectible because uh, it is only. Re- it is reported that only about a hundred units of these rice cookers were sold. So finding one is gonna be very rare. So if you're, uh, let's say, a collector, I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, anyways, after the failure of the product, they started to focus on radio repair and improving technologies for radio. And from there on, uh, Walkman. Everything is a history, know, rice cooker. But imagine if this was a success. Can you imagine the brand Sony in your rice cooker? That's pretty cool. You know what? I think they should they should go back to uh, trying to develop the rice cooker again. I'm just saying. I mean, they have good technology now. They have better uh, electronics now. So why not? I mean, Samsung is making a smart fridge, smart TV, smart washer. Washer? Right? They have a washer? I, I believe so. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. They make a lot of stuff. Okay, maybe not washer, but fridge and TV and then, uh, yeah, like those appliances. I mean, they should go back to it. It's like, I know, right? I really want to see a Sony rice cooker. That would be cool. That would be cool. So, I don't know. Dude, when it finished cooking, right, it plays the Sony boot sound for your PlayStation. <laughs> Dun. <laughs> Dun. Your rice is done. <laughs> Oh, that was good. That was good. That's a good one. All right. Uh, That's a good laugh before we end the show today, guys. But thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. I always say this. Don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. Joe, are you going to say something? No, I was going to say they can see you tomorrow too, right? Uh, Yes, with Ian tomorrow. And will I be here for you on Thursday? Uh, No, Thursday, not anymore because Liz is back by then. Well, I see you again on Friday. On Friday, definitely, yes. Okay, awesome. See you guys on Friday then with me. See you guys on Friday with Joe, uh, but I'll see you guys again tomorrow with Ian. And then Liz is back, so uh, give her a nice welcome back when you, uh, when you watch her episode, okay? Uh, gonna have to say goodbye for now. I'm gonna grab some coffee. And, oh, yeah, uh, coffee. Oh, wait, at least for Joe, because I don't really drink coffee. So. Anyways, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.